Hi everyone, Father Norm here. Uh, this week, uh, this coming weekend at our parish, and I believe a number of other parishes around the diocese, there are seminarians come to speak about their vocation to become priests. And many of you probably know that we've had here the last couple of years, uh, two different seminarians that uh, spent some time with us as interns. And one, Dominic Gideon, just last uh, May became a priest. And I probably talked about him before. It's exciting to see he was here for a year, three years ago. And, and since that time went on for further studies. And I know he's excited about being a priest and, and uh, very much looking forward to giving his life to the Lord and to all that priesthood is. And I think he saw even his preparation, even when he was here, along with another seminarian, Jeffrey Lindholm, that uh, in, they were each here almost a year. Uh, they got to see what it's like behind the scenes, what it's like in everyday life as a priest, and just the opportunities they were looking forward to feeling called and feeling called to be priests and priests who would make a difference in people's lives, especially through the offering of faith in Jesus Christ. That got me thinking from this seminary and talking this weekend about a couple things that go way back. I probably mentioned this to you before, way back, this is my 50th year as a priest. And I was thinking about that first year, especially in light of talking with Dominic and Jeffrey, each of them as they'll go through their first year. So for me, it was St. Barnabas in Northfield. And I can remember uh, one of the marriages there early on because that was something new. We had just studied, like these guys have, these seminarians who are becoming priests, studied uh, to be able to celebrate weddings and to be able to prepare young couples for weddings. And I can remember uh, talking to, oh, well, several couples. In fact, in the years that I've been a priest, I've probably done over a thousand weddings. I may not have told you this before, or I may have, but anyway, every once in a while, uh, a woman will come up to me, let's say she's in her 40s, and she'll say to me, oh, gee, Father Norm, you married me. And I, and I would often say glibly, I admit, I did, I don't even remember the honeymoon. And they'd laugh and say, oh, you know, uh, uh, you know what I meant. I said, oh yeah. But one of the beautiful opportunities among many to meet with young, young people here in, in marriage preparation. And I can remember one example, but there were many through the years where a couple came in and, and they were getting married in the church because that's what you're supposed to do, get married in the church. And they were gonna fulfill all the obligations, whatever it is, so they could have a church wedding. And when I talked to them, similar to a number of people I've talked to through the years, uh, they were admitting that they hadn't been going to church that often and that it seemed like this was more of an obligation. Well, they went through some pre-marriage preparation. We had a, those days, we had a retreat for young engaged couples. And it's funny, their whole attitude turned around because they came to see that this wedding shouldn't be just fulfilling a rule in the Catholic Church, but they saw that it could be a beautiful opportunity to come together and recognize not only they were vowing their love to each other, but Jesus Christ was vowing his love to them to be part of that relationship in the sacrament of matrimony. And I can tell you, I saw this couple because they were in my first year, oh, maybe two or three years back from now they're grandparents and everything, and we were able to talk. And that faith that they really came to an adult and deeper awareness in marriage preparation has made a difference all these years. And you can see anybody that, uh, that what's beautiful about our Catholic Christian faith is we enhance what marriage is all about because it means that God is giving God's self through Jesus to the couple for the rest of their life so they would count not only on each other, but on the living Lord and to be a part of that. One other sacrament that I would say, or actually a, a ritual, a, a blessing for people, a deep blessing, is when uh, people go through loss of loved ones. And again, I remember my first year, uh, a, a couple, uh, they were probably in their 40s, and their son was killed in an accident. Uh, in fact, my, my first year at the parish, and remember reaching out to him because he died uh, in, in right near where, where our parish was and was able to get over there too. Then that was very traumatic for me to see. Can't even begin to realize with the parents 
but you know they came together they were obviously broken hearted uh, over time i would see them pretty regularly they also helped me start a grief sharing group uh, they started to talk to other parents and find out where other parents in the whole summit county area who lost loved ones who would come together in mutual support all of that I know made a difference and it made a difference for them and their fa family. Were they broken hearted? Did they still have pain to deal with? Yes. But they came to that belief that that accident and that death did not have the final say. They missed their son deeply, but they believed that God and God's life and resurrection in Jesus Christ was the ultimate say. And so their son was brought to the fullness of love. That was a hope they had. And I know, I just remember the, 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 the father there died a few years ago. The mother died just about a year or two ago. And I saw some of the family and they said, Father, that was the most difficult, most painful period of all of our family life. But we thank you and that faith made a difference and the faith community. So being a priest, hey, you can be a lay person and do this for people. But to know that this is a vocation, a vocation to priesthood, yes, but a vocation for every one of us to be followers of Jesus Christ and to share the meaning and the hope and the peace and the joy that he can bring in the midst of all the ups and downs of daily life. God bless you. May you have that peace and joy.